So in this video, I'm going to be breaking down the whole shooting process of a recent photo shoot that I did for Tarry on Camera Bags. And before we actually head out and shoot, I wanted to quickly cover the pre-production side of things and how I got ready for this shoot. So firstly, if you watch any of my recent videos, breaking down some of my recent photo shoots, then you already know that I always create some type of mood board on canva.com. And for this shoot, it was no different because I created this mood board using photos that I found on Pinterest. And as you can see from some of the reference photos, I was aiming for a lifestyle shoot that showcases the bags in use. But now with the mood board created, I was then able to start planning what gear I'd be using. And for this shoot, I ended up going with my Sony a7 IV alongside the 24 to 70 millimeter G Master, 55 millimeter Sony, and my 85 millimeter Sony. Sony lenses. And now with the pre-production side of things out of the way, let's jump into the shoot. Uh, what is up guys? So we just got to the first location. Today we're shooting in Nihonbashi here in Tokyo and we're shooting these two bags that Tarion has sent us. And fun fact, on that last shoot that me and JC did with those sneakers, I saw him wearing this bag and I was like, bro, that's a, such a dope bag. So I ended up reaching out to him and a couple weeks later, we're here shooting for him. So let's jump into it. All right, so for this shot, we're gonna be shooting the sling bag first. And pretty much what we're doing for this shot is I've got JC with the sling bag in front of him and we're making it so he's actually taking the camera out of the bag. In regards of the setup, using the Sony a7 IV, 55 millimeter. And I'm probably gonna go with a higher shutter speed here and a higher aperture, just because the sun is coming from here. You can probably see my face is all squinted. But anyway, let's try to get the shot. So I'm gonna get low for this shot and then let's, set it up so yeah a little bit you're bringing it out yeah the camera i just want to see the camera a little bit and then your face yeah looking at the light so i'm going to take the shot three two one and then this one we'll do with the camera up so this one we're going to get him actually pretending to use the camera so maybe shooting towards the light yeah yeah perfect perfect all right hold that three two one and just using the leading lines of this bridge as well, just to add some depth to the photo. Uh, three, two, one. All right, bro, that's a wrap for this one. Let's keep moving. All right, so we just found this mad sliver of light at the moment. So we're actually set up the backpack to be just a product focus shot. And what we're doing is there's a lot of like these autumn leaves around as well. So I'm going to get JC to actually drop some leaves while I'm taking the photo. So when doing this, you want to have a higher shutter speed just to freeze the actual falling of the leaves. And we've already set it up. We've added some autumn leaves on the actual ground in front of the bag to add some foreground Ooh. element. What happened? What? <laughs> Doshta. Come here. Ah, uh, what the Ew. fuck is that, bro? Uh, almost oh. got it. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you gotta watch. It. When you're doing this, watch out. With <laughs> you never know what you're gonna get. One million, you eat it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> A few moments later. So yeah, when you're doing it, bro, just drop it down like sort of slowly. Um, I'll just add a few more. I need to be careful about the shadow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Actually, hold on. Let me bring this bag. Okay. Do you want me to be like really close to the camera or like? Just sort of like, and maybe move it around as well. Yeah, you can move it around. All right, so we're going to get the shot in three, two, one, go. All right, so since we've already got the bag set up, I'm actually gonna do a GIF. So you might've seen these things on Instagram where the photo is actually moving side to side, sort of like a boomerang on Instagram. And pretty much how you do that is, you gotta make sure your subject is as still as possible. So since we're shooting a bag, it's not moving, so that's totally fine. And what you do is when you shoot, 
you want to move the camera slightly and you're going to shoot in high burst mode. And when doing this, you want to keep your subject in the middle of the frame. So pretty much when you're moving the camera, you're moving it, but keeping the subject in the middle. So let's try it out. Three, two, one. Alright, so we just got to Tokyo Station now and for this shot, I want to do a gift thing again. So similar to what we did with the product focus of just the bag, but this time I want to tell more of a story. So instead of just creating one gift where it's just one photo moving, we're actually going to create a story and do three different photos. So the first photo I'm thinking is JC holding the bag. The second one will be a over the shoulder and then the third one will be actually him taking a photo. So you'll see when I put the edit together but pretty much was doing the same thing. So when taking the photo, you wanna keep the subject in the middle. You're gonna use high burst mode and just move slightly to the left or right. So let's get it done. If we can a little bit more in the light, yeah, right there, right there, okay. Yeah, perfect, okay. So three, two, one, stay still. Okay, perfect. When you're doing this, have the horizon level on and also show your grids on your camera. It will just help you compose the photo and keep everything straight. So now we'll set up the second shot and we'll see you soon. Maybe actually let's make the bag sideways. Uh, gyaku, gyaku, the other way. Yeah, so then when you're opening it, it's yeah, going yeah. that way, yeah, yeah, yeah. Actually, I might switch lenses. This is too wide. So I was shooting with an 85, but this is too wide for this shot. So I'm gonna go 55. Yeah, so we're going the 55 Zeiss. The first shot, 85 was good, but for this over the shoulder, I just want to get parts of the side of his head and also his shoulder to just pretty much add some foreground elements and 85 was a little bit too tight for that. But let's try again, bro. Yeah, okay, this is a lot better. Okay, so let's try in three. You just stay still, yeah? Three, two, one. Okay, perfect. So that's that one. The last shot we're gonna set up is him actually taking the photo. So let's try that now. So this one, you don't really need to show the bag too much. Uh, this facing me, bro. Oh, facing you? Yeah, yeah, so maybe, actually we'll do side. Yeah, so you're shooting that way. Like imagine right, you've got yeah, the camera yeah. this way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, so for this one, this is gonna be the final setup. And again, same concept, keeping him in the middle and moving side to side. So let's test it out. All right, so you stay still, yeah? All right, so three, Two, one, go. And that's pretty much it. So when we actually go into the editing section of this video, I will show you how to put it together. But once you do this, you're gonna get something like this. All right, so that pretty much wraps up the shooting process. So let's move into the actual editing room. So I'll see you back in the studio. All right, so we're back in the studio now and I went ahead and edited the photos using my personal presets and some slight retouching inside of Adobe Photoshop. But for the rest of this video, I wanted to go over the editing process of how to put together this three-step GIF effect. So let's just jump straight into the computer. All right, so step number one is we're gonna stack all the photos we'll be using into one project inside of Adobe Photoshop. So here we can see I have a total of 12 photos, which basically breaks down into four or photos for each scene. And it's super important to stack these photos in order because this will end up being the sequence of your GIF. So for example, if I hide these layers, we can see the movement throughout the photos are in order. But now step number two is to refine the positioning. And to do this, we're gonna pull out a guide from our side rulers here and then drop it into the middle of our canvas. And if you don't see your rulers inside of Photoshop, you can go up to view and then scroll down and then select rulers. And this guide will ensure we are keeping our subjects in the middle of the frame. But now from here, we're gonna turn off all the layers of our photo, except for the last one. And we're now gonna reposition each photo. 
So to do this, turn on the layer for your second photo and then drop the opacity to 50%. Here we can see our subjects are not perfectly matching. So to fix this, make sure your second photo layer is selected and then we're gonna reposition this until they match. Now, once these two layers are matching, we're now gonna raise the opacity of our second photo back up to 100% and we're now gonna repeat this same process for the rest of our photos. So again, select the next photo and then lower the opacity and if needed, Needed, go ahead and reposition the photo to match the photo below. And I'm not going to waste your time, so I'll just speed up this process for the rest of these photos. Okay, so once all your photos are repositioned and centered, we're now going to enter step three, which is creating a timeline. And before we do that, we're going to turn off the visibility of all our layers, except for our first photo. And then once you've done that, go up to window and then select timeline. From here, we're going to see this timeline area appear inside of our window and we can now click on create video timeline. Now, step number four is animations. And we're going to start this by first clicking on this icon here. And this will convert our project into a frame animation. After that, we're going to copy this layer by the amount of photos in our GIF. So for this example, I have 12 photos. So I'm going to click this plus icon until I have 12 frames. Okay, once you've done that, we're now going to assign each frame to each of our photos by first selecting the second frame in our timeline and then turning on the visibility of our second photo layer. For the third frame, we're going to turn on the visibility of our third photo layer and then we're just going to repeat this process for the rest of our photos. Okay, now once you've done all of that, we're now moving on to step number five, which is exporting. And to do this, we're going to go up to file, then export and then click save for web. And once this export window appears, we're going to change the format to GIF and then change the color reduction to adaptive. And then once you've set those settings, we're just going to hit save and then choose anywhere on your computer to save this GIF. Now, once the file is exported, we're now going to open up Premiere Pro and depending where you're planning to share this video, you can customize your frame size. But for this example, I'm making it for an Instagram post. So I'm going to set the frame size to 1080 by 1350. Now, once your sequence is created, Created, just drop in your exported GIF and if this window appears, just click keep existing settings. And now after that, our GIF should now be showing in our timeline. And if you see these black bars around your frame, we can easily get rid of this by selecting our clip and then increasing the scale like so. Now from here, we're gonna speed up our clip by right clicking it and then selecting speed slash duration. Once this window appears, we're gonna change the duration to four seconds. Also inside of this window, we're gonna change the time into interpolation to optical flow. Once that's completed, we're going to duplicate this clip by selecting it. And while holding the option key, we can drag a copy like so. Now from here, right click this new copy and then go back into the speed and duration. But then this time we're going to select reverse speed. Now from here, if we play this video back, we should now have something that looks like this. And depending on how long you want your video to be, you can duplicate these clips as many times as you want. But for this example, I'm gonna double it by selecting both clips and while holding option, I'll drag over like so. Now, the last thing to do from here is to export this video out. And we can do this by going up to file, then export. And depending on where you're posting this, you can then adjust these export settings to match your platform. But there we have it. That is a behind the scenes look of how I went about shooting product photos for the brand Tarion. And if you're interested in learning more stuff like this, you can click this video here, which gives a behind the scenes look on how I shot photos for some Nike Jordan sneakers. I'll see you there.